the early days of a child's life, our families are reeling from the impact of the news that their child isn't going to develop in the way that they expected. Um, they're trying to do their best um, and so therefore they um, look for help to try and see whether they can ensure that their child can catch up um, and to reach their goals. Um, they inevitably uh, turn to early intervention for support and are often shocked at the low levels of support that are available. So maybe we could put ourselves in, in their shoes um, and think about how we would feel and to imagine your frustration if you had to wait and wait and wait knowing that as each day passes, the chances for your child realising his or her full potential is slipping away before your very eyes. The Victorian Government is proud of its blueprint on education and early childhood development, and the tagline is every child, every opportunity. But once you dig below these nice words, um, it isn't really de delivering as fully as it should. And when challenged, um, policymakers often say, well, you know, this, this policy, public policy, is aspirational. And I've thought about that and thought, well, you know, families have aspirations too. And they have aspirations for their children. And so um, it's very difficult to sit by and wait and wait. And why should they? Would we? I don't think so. So every child, every opportunity needs to happen, and it needs to happen right from the start. When you have got a child who's born with a diagnosis and you have to wait 10 months to actually get to a service that is weekly and sustainable and, and the service you need to get you through your daily life, then that's a long wait, an extremely long wait. I had two other children. I had a three-year-old and a two-year-old and I had a newborn baby with a disability. And to put a family through that struggle is really not fair. There should be steps and, and links and, and you should be able to access that care straight from, you know, or, as you're leaving a maternal maternity hospital, we should be given that support. And, and, and we did have to wait for a fair while for early intervention, but I think for us, we, I felt that we were also lucky in that way because we did receive a diagnosis right from birth. I think it's very difficult for a lot of other families, and I'd say most other families, because they don't often know um, until a lot later. My son was almost four before we received any early intervention services, which is a long time to wait when you consider that it was, he was 15 to 16 months of age when we first started investigating uh, that there may have been a problem with his development. Um, we first went to see our GP uh, and said that there was a few problems, he didn't have speech and he had regressed in a, uh, a few different ways and just wasn't keeping up with his peers and we were made to feel that we were neurotic first-time parents and um, although in your heart you know that there's a, a problem. So we did continue to investigate a bit more and went to our maternal child health nurse and she was very helpful and put us on the right track. My name is Sharon, I have a son who has an autism spectrum disorder and similar to Kim's situation we didn't receive any early intervention until our son was three and a half, almost four years of age. Uh, and then we had to wait until he was almost three and a half before we actually got in to see the autism assess assessment team for a diagnosis. Uh, and um, uh, that was only because there was a cancellation, so we could have even been waiting a lot longer for that at diagnosis. Uh, and then we um, were still on the waiting list for early intervention services, and he was uh, almost four before we, we actually got um, to to see anybody in that regard. But, uh, it's a long, wait, long time to wait for a family who are dealing with the diagnosis as well as the um, emotional uh, roller coaster of just dealing with day to day things um, and around your child with a disability. So it's just not on, not good enough. You needed to have a service and, and as soon as possible, and it wouldn't matter which service it was, whether it's Urella or Noah's Ark or any other services that are available that are relevant to you, the sooner you needed that service, the sooner you got that service, the better it would have been. Yeah. Instead of being put onto waiting lists and being told, you know, we don't know when, we don't know when, just keep on trying. Mm -hmm. Had we been given a contact person that was right through and an actual service, a provider, it would have been a completely different story. It would have stopped a lot of the stress, a lot of the yeah. heartache, a lot of these feelings of, um, being isolated but also I felt like I was 
having to be this pushy person that had to do everything myself, but not knowing where to turn. Yeah. So the whole concept of early intervention, I fully support and agree with, but if you don't get it and it's not early, it defeats all the purpose. Spot on. <laughs> I agree with that, totally. A lot of families, while they are on a waiting list, will seek services elsewhere, and so they'll go privately to receive um, you know, speech therapy and occupational therapy. And you know, I think that often they think, well, we'll just do this until we do get early intervention. And uh, for them, it's sort of like when we do finally get early intervention, it's going to be this magic panacea and it's going to solve everything. We won't have to have any of these therapies. But the reality is a lot of the families are actually keeping these therapies on because there just isn't, there isn't enough support within the early intervention um, yeah, program to be able to, to give them everything they need. I remember when they actually said that I was off the waiting list and that we were going to be getting services and they told me I was going to get an hour and a half a fortnight, I nearly cried because I added it up with school holidays and sick days and all sorts of things. It was only going to be about 48 hours for a year mm -hmm. and I nearly cried because early intervention is supposed to be um, it, key for your child mm -hmm. and I just couldn't believe that that's what all, all the early intervention was at that point. We know that access to timely and adequate early childhood intervention improves outcomes for children and their families. There are currently over 1,000 children still waiting for early childhood intervention services within Victoria. It is projected that an additional 1,000 early childhood intervention places will be required by 2011-2012. Families need immediate access to early childhood intervention services.